Hello and welcome back to the fifth part in my series of videos about the ideal perfect QNAP NAS setup. Today I want to talk about surveillance. That is the ability to add everything from IP cameras to IP speakers and more and have a security um, setup with your NAS that can, you know, compete with business class MVR. Now QNAP arrives with two great surveillance platforms, Surveillance Station and QVR Pro. The first one a little bit more technical, the latter a lot more chewable and easy friendly. With both of these you get camera licenses with your NAS and they both support a myriad of great security um, software and plugins. Alongside this, you've got features such as the USB cam support, which let you utilize USB cameras on your QNAP NAS and then pass them through to the surveillance station application along with QVR Pro. But along with this, there are lots of other bits and bobs with mobile applications and more that I want to talk to you about today. So without further ado, let's make our way to the graphical user interface of QNAP NAS and go through surveillance. Now I've already done a few videos on this camera already, but I really wanted to focus on this because a number of you when it comes to buying your right NVR solution, your NAS with surveillance, typically seem to really be flocking towards QNAP here. So what I'm going to do is overview the software and of course the camera's capabilities as well. I'll be talking on this camera as well as uh, in front of me I've got a laptop here and I'm sure you can see it on screen. So without further ado, let's go into it. We're on the QBR Pro software and if you do want to see a full overview of this software, do check out my other video on that. Um, at the same time as this, we will be utilising a USB camera that we've connected to the NAS and utilising USB Cam 2, which converts USB cameras on the QNAP into IP cameras. Bloody awesome! Um, so you can have a static camera attached effectively to the QNAP. Um, so first thing first, we go to the camera settings and start adding those cameras. So again, we've got at the moment um, a camera connected uh, via the wireless network and we've got a camera connected via USB. So we're going to search the area network for these cameras now. If I do lapse into not talking, I apologise in advance. But there you go, it's found both of those cameras straight away. So we're going to add both of them. Remember, QBR arrives with a bunch of licences. This only utilises two of these licences. So at the top, we've got the USB camera. So first we have to include the login information for the QNAP in question, as well as uh, the login for that camera, which by default is just the word admin and nothing more. We can click test on each of those individual cameras to double check that they're working. And this will add a little bit of extra time to the video. I'm sorry about that. So we're just testing that both those cameras do indeed appear on the network and are found by the NAS. Of course, the more network connectivity you've got going on on your network can lower or heighten those access times. But it's found both those cameras moving forward. We can edit the recording settings later on. Um, but what we're going to do is we're going to edit them now and just go straight in and start editing when we want it to record. So straight away you can time of day, um, again you can change the kinds of recording, there's loads of different settings there and I do recommend you check out my full overview of QBR Pro. Uh, remember this is more about the camera than the software but it's always nice to balance the pair of them, doesn't it? So there we go, uh, the software is now going to add both of these cameras and while it does that I'll take the opportunity to talk about another part of QBR Pro. Now the software itself is, you know, it has all the features and functionality you're going to need. Now, one of the most common comparisons made by me and other YouTubers is this and Synology Software Surveillance Station. Surveillance Station is a lot more chewable, a lot more friendly, I've got to say, uh, the, the Synology one, but it lacks a lot of business functionality. And QBR Pro is about enterprise. It's about all those great features which for your home security are going to be very, very necessary. So again, if you don't mind a little bit more of a learning curve, then I do recommend going for QBR Pro for the business users. Don't get me wrong, the Synology app is very, very good indeed, but it seems to try to cover um, easy home and business, and some of that gets lost in translation. So do bear that in mind. And what we'll do is I can see it's taking a bit of extra time to add these cameras, so I'm just gonna skip forward to when these cameras are fully added. So now our cameras have been added, what we need to do next is move over to the client software available for Mac and Windows. This is a separate application that you can install on your desktop interface and from there you can access pretty much the entire control panel of QBI. It removes a lot of the system resource hogging that you find 
from a lot of surveillance programs that run via the browser and moves it into the client interface. A lot of the settings can be toyed with via your web browser, but the full control deck is much better served off of the web browser. Again, not a huge fan of that if I'm honest. I quite like the option of having both and there is mobile applications too, but in order to really see what we can do with this camera, we've got to move over to the QVR Pro client software. So once you load up the QVR Pro um, client software, what you first need to do is start moving cameras into the user interface. So we'll drag that first camera in, and this is our USB camera. And next to that, we will include a next camera. I might have to mute that. And that means we've now got both of these cameras. So if I turn around and wave, you can see me on the Rio Link C2 Pro camera at the same time. I've set up the web camera so we can see more of this camera and what it does whilst in operation. So first thing first, if we want to have live control of the pan, tilt and zoom, this um, the Rio Link C2 does have very good controls there. So again, very intuitive. And if you are using touchscreen devices, you can use the QVR Pro um, software to maneuver that just by touchscreen. So if we bring that down, Again, the camera itself has an optical zoom and digital zoom functionality. Let's bring that back up. And if we go over to zoom, we can start zooming in on my weird face. So I'm gonna start looking at camera. I'm just gonna hold that button down. And again, I know you can't really hear that. If you can hear some noises in the background, that's the 14 TB drive I've got inside this QNAP, a little bit more industrial than the number of drives. But if we start moving in with that optical zoom, we can see that camera's coming in. Again, there are other features of functionality too. If you want to go for a digital zoom, you can of course just go and zoom in digitally and a digital zoom will bring things in lovely and tight. And from there, we can see me there on screen. And again, how that reacts with the optical zoom, it's hard to say. Um, but We've also got audio functionality. So right now this microphone is recording my audio. You're not gonna be able to hear that in this video because a lot of the time the audio would just double back and feedback quite poorly in the background there. If we remove that and bring the camera right back out to normal, we can again go to the, we can enable preset points. And of course the pan tilt zoom we've already looked at. So if we maxima take a screen grab so we can then save directly from this camera onto our local PC. And of course, we've got the control interface of QVR Pro. Now, the Rio Link C2 does, uh, C2 Pro arrives with its own proprietary software. There is uh, the Rio software available for desktop and mobile applications, but of course, you will need somewhere to store that footage. And again, there is an SD card slot on it, but I highly, highly, highly recommend you use a NAS to store that data. You can still use the Rio Link software, but I'd recommend using the Rio Link hardware in the form of that camera, along with a surveillance NAS. Now, if we max screen this, because again, there's more we can do if we turn this so it looks at that webcam, we might get a better look at this camera. Now, there is a night mode, but I do not believe I can enable night mode um, automatically within a daytime setting. There is an automatic switch on this camera that will enable those eight LEDs that are built into the device to switch to night mode and give it up to 40 feet of coverage. Um, and again, we've got settings up there at the top. I'm gonna to try to talk less and less about QVR, more about the camera, because all of the features and functionality of the Rio Link C2, and do check out my review, tell you everything you need, to, uh, that, that gives you all of the features and the functionality. So you've got motion detection, you've got a five megapixel uh, recording resolution, and you've got uh, that night vision to act with motion detection across that distance thanks to those LEDs. There's a microphone built into the device for audio in and out, so it can both record sound and let you project and alert people in front of you. So let's see how much of that we can tinker with on here. How many of these camera settings can we access on this device? Let's have a look. Let's go to settings and go to alert, play sounds for notifications. And again, that's more to do with the software than this camera. If we move into it, we can obviously change the resolution settings. And this camera does support 1080p recording, which is fantastic. Um, if we move into further into the device, there's obviously the volume settings there. And again, most of this we're seeing from my camera, uh, from my laptop's perspective, rather than the camera. So it's very hard to give that an advantage. But if we 
full screen this camera. Let's remove you for a second, remove that camera and full screen. Now we can go back to this camera. So if we zoom out a little bit. See if we can get a good shot of the optical zooming perhaps. So maximize that there. Zoom in a little bit. Switch back to the other camera. Switch that to a 2x2 two two formation. And now we can start utilizing some of that zoom functionality there. And again, controlling the pan tilt zoom as well as enabling that zoom, that optical zoom, into that device. But it's not really picking up very well, I've got to say, um, on that webcam. So unfortunately, we're not going to be able to rely on that. But again, if you are looking for a webcam right now, the Real C2 Pro, <coughs> you can do a lot worse. Don't get me wrong, it seems a pinch more expensive than many, but for the sheer ease of use, the fact that it arrived with its own software, it's got a wireless and LAN connectivity, and moreover, it's completely supported by Asus Store, by Synology, and of course, by QNAV. All of these features and the functionality are available on those um, uh, NVR platforms. So thank you so much for watching. If you've enjoyed this or found it in any way helpful at all, then do click like and subscribe at the bottom. Thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you next time.